All right, in this video, we're going to talk about volumes of revolution, um, and specifically something called disks and washers. I'm not actually going to do any examples in here. I'm just going to kind of uh, show you how to get to what we end up doing, um, and also kind of cover a lot of the cases that can show up. Because um, what you want to do is really understand what's going on, and then once you do the problems, uh, those are just kind of mechanical. So let's say we have a function f of x, and what we're going to do is uh, kind of establish a region between... Uh, x equals a and x equals b, and we want to rotate that region around the x-axis in this case. Okay, so we have an axis we're rotating around, we have that little region, um, and we're going to get a solid when we rotate. So what we do is this. Um, if I draw a rectangle, uh, then the base of that rectangle would be delta x, and the height of that rectangle, the way I've drawn it, is at that point, which is f of, I'm going to say x sub i. So I pick some x value between a and b, and I find the height there. So I have one rectangle. If I rotate a rectangle, hopefully you know that rotating a rectangle is going to give you a cylinder, right? So I'm going to get a cylinder, which means that now I can find the volume of that cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder we know is pi and then the radius squared and then the height. So the cylinder, if you're kind of looking at this rectangle, uh, in your mind you might be thinking that it's, it's kind of sitting on its height. So what happens is the volume of the ith cylinder is going to be pi. So at x sub i is where I'm determining the height, so that would be the ith cylinder. So it's going to be pi. And then the radius is actually f of x sub i, and then squared. And then the height is actually delta x. So I get that. Now if I do that a lot, you know, break up the region into a bunch of things, I can get an approximation of the volume, and that would just be the sum from 1 to n, of all of the little cylinders that I would get. Now, if um, n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, I get closer and closer to the true volume, and the actual total volume can be found by doing the limit of this summation, which is not a limit that we would calculate directly because we've encountered this kind of limit several times, and we know that this limit is actually a definite integral. So the volume is actually pi times the integral from a to b of f of x squared dx. Uh, so that's what we do if we're taking a function going around just the x-axis. So let's take a look at some things. So this was a case we just handled. We have what I'm going to call r, and we're going around there. So r in this case is f of x minus 0, because y equals 0 is the x-axis. And our volume ended up this, pi, the integral from a to b, of f of x squared dx. Okay, so we could have a different scenario. And the different scenario would be that f of x is actually below the x-axis. So in this case, uh, I've drawn the region again. It's always a good idea to draw the region, maybe shade it a little bit. I'm going to draw in uh, my radius again and show the axis I'm rotating around. So I always put a little arrow showing what I'm going to rotate around so that when I look at my picture I can tell. And in this case, if I figure out what r is, r is actually going to be 0 minus f of x because I want r to be positive. You'll notice that we're squaring, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, I, I like it to be positive because it just makes physical sense when you try to think about it. So in this case, the volume would be pi, the integral from a to b, and then the quantity 0 minus f of x squared and dx. All right, another case. So say we're not using just the x-axis, but some more general axis. So we end up with this region. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my r again, and I'm also going to show the axis. So that, in this case, is the radius. So you start at the axis, and you just kind of shoot your radius out until you hit the function. So I start at the axis, and I go up until I hit f of x. That's my radius. So my radius is f of x minus the axis. That would give me a positive number. That's usually the check I do. Just think, if I subtracted those y values, would I get a positive? I would, so that's it. So in this case, my volume is pi, the integral from a to b, f of x minus the axis, quantity squared, and then dx. Okay, let's do another one. So let's say that I have a general axis, but the function is below it. So I draw my region, I'm going to draw my r and my arrow again, and in this case the axis is above f of x, so I start at the axis and I just shoot out a radius until I hit the function. It hits it, but it's below the axis, so the r that I get is going to be the axis minus f of x, and therefore the volume that I get is going to be pi, and from a to b, the quantity axis minus f of x squared dx. All right, so that's the general idea. I do want to cover one more thing, 
because this is a very common thing to happen. So I have a general axis, I have a function f of x, I have a function g of x, and uh, sometimes g of x or f of x will be a constant function, sometimes it will be linear. Uh, that just gives you a really nice edge on the solid that you get. Um, so the, the region is between f of x, g of x, and x equals a and b, and I'm rotating around my axis. So in this case, I'm going to start at the axis. I'm going to shoot out a radius until I hit the farthest curve. So the farthest curve in this case is f of x. So the r that I get is going to be f of x minus the axis, which if you look at it is really just the outer curve minus the axis. Do it again. Start at the axis and shoot it out until I hit the closest curve. So that's going to be a smaller r is g of x minus the axis, or I like to think of it as just the inner curve minus the axis. And then the volume, the total volume, you're really just doing big volume minus small volume, which is a fine way to do it. Or you might choose to remember it as the volume is equal to pi, the integral from a to b, the quantity, and then another quantity, outer minus axis squared minus quantity inner minus axis squared, and then dx. Okay, so in this case, what you're doing is outer minus axis squaring it minus inner minus axis squaring that. Um, and then that's how you do the problem. So uh, the main thing that people do wrong there is they, uh, they kind of like subtract the two quantities before they square, and then it's just bad algebra is what they're basically doing. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, I'll come back in some other videos and do examples so that you can see how this works in action, but uh, good luck with that.